Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. Let's do some pod crashing. Episode number 331 is with Bruce Bozzi from the podcast Table for Two, Season 2. I'm good, Arrow. Thank you. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. I want to talk to you about why you don't like sardines. I mean, the way you broke it out with uh, Ellen Birkin. I mean, it's like, come on, Bruce, eat them! <laughs> <laughs> I do not understand how people like sardines. Never have. And if you are a lover of sardines... Man, you're committed to that love. It's crazy. Well, one of the things that I've learned is I like to go in and try to find new flavors. And and the thing that I learned about sardines is that you've got to have something that has a higher acid level in order to break that that fishy kind of a flavor to it. And so I'll do. And so yeah. I'll turn it into kind of like a ceviche of sorts. Well, let me ask you this: so when like you're biting the sardine, like it, it's like a it's a it's a little fish, like so it has the head and the tail. Is it like firm to the bite? Like I think it's freaks me out a little bit. <laughs> well, I crush it. So therefore, I don't even get to see what the body looks like. I crush it down and then this way that okay. I, and I like it better than tuna fish is what I do. Wow. Okay. You know, Arrow, we're not going to have sardines together. <laughs> we're going to have lunch, but you're going to have you'll sit with Ellen on that side of the table and <laughs> You are a master at conversation. I mean, all your conversations, it's like you just say it, it comes from the top of the mind. But do you do show prep? Well, oh, my God, what a compliment. Thank you. Um, I do do show prep and um, we, you know, I go in with research that um, the team over at uh, iHeart and uh, Airmail that I'm partnered with, they kind of deliver like a sort of one sheet. And and then I look at it, Arrow, to be honest with you, and then I really kind of say if someone's plugging something, it's easy to sort of focus in on a sort of job that they want to plug. But that's always where then I want to veer away from because I really want the hour to be, what are the things if I'm having lunch with Ellen Barkin that I I want to know? And quite honestly, like Ellen, someone who I know personally for a long time, my show is a mix of people that I know just and people that I don't. And I learned so much about Ellen and I knew so much already, but like, her, her 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 early years at the school of performing arts yes you know the, the, the amount of time she was told she was untalented <clears throat> unattractive don't do this she's in the wrong room to what, what you know the, 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 on, on tender mercies with robert duvall what he taught her and you know and the strength of where all this this you know who she is as a, as a human so i like to go in long answer uh Free form. Yeah. So if I'm doing my job correctly and I'm listening, I'm going to be able to pivot when the conversation, when someone says something, because I'm like, oh, wow, they just said something. So if they're, let's say, talking about their parents, now they brought me into the room yeah. and where normally I might not say, tell me about your relationship with your dad. They brought me into that room where I can then say, so let's talk about that. Like, how did that feel <laughs> like, how, you know, who was your father to you in that? So it's 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 very fun for me. Because I do love talking to people and I get uh, really filled up uh, learning about people. So kind of my restaurant background and putting food in front of us because yeah. there's so much romance at the table that I, I, I love to not be overly prepared. But when I'm – it's a slippery, slippery slope because if I don't know enough, all of a sudden sometimes I'm like, ooh – where am I going with this? Yeah. I'm a little lost now, so it can get a little tricky because I don't want the person to be like, this guy's a dope. <laughs> See, that's every reason why I took on a job at a grocery store because I just wanted to hear people's stories. And and when you've got yeah. every age, every group, everybody there, it's it's like, tell me more. Just give, give me more input. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I mean, that, and I think that all came from years of being in the restaurant business because it was it was two sides. You know, one of the things that I loved about being in the restaurant business was not just the customers that came in, but the people I worked with yeah. because their stories to me were so interesting. The people that worked behind the line, the people that were making the salads, the people that were serving, the, the people that were cleaning. This is like, these are people. And a lot of times people overlook the these jobs and they're kind of like just in the service end and they just sit down and then yet the experience we had to deliver and the relationships because it was my job at the palm when i was at the palm was all about relationships yes it became it was very clear like i had my responsibilities my duties but it was really oh this is about relationships with the internal customer and the external customer and 
and, and how to make that dance work so everybody in their day is is happy and that hospitality piece that I think was kind of genetic arrow because my great grandfather started the you know it's been generational allows me I think to sit at the table a with credibility and b with just an open heart of having done and been in the room with the when it worked, when it didn't work, how to salvage something, how to make someone happy when they were unhappy, how to celebrate life. Because I always said, like, going to the restaurant, people go to the restaurant to celebrate life, mm-hmm. you know, whatever's mm-hmm. happening in their life. And I think sitting at the table, uh, a table for two, which is really about that. It's about celebrating life and being kind and curious and somewhat provocative at times, but just learning about people and how they got themselves into their room and created the life that they have, want, the good times, the bad times. I mean, um, it's interesting, you know, Sharon Stone talks about season, in season one, like when she couldn't get a job or yeah. when she came after Basic Instinct, the town turned on her and like she was nominated for an Academy Award for Casino, I believe, and no one would give her a dress and no one would do this. And she was like, you know, blackballed. And you're like, wow, like who knew that? Yeah. You know, like who knew? Or John Hamm basically saying, you know, I gave myself five years and I was at the end of it. Like I was, you know, he had lost uh, his parents. He, he was, uh, you know, living way out not in hollywood and he was trying to make it happen and just before he was about to like give up his op so it's i i'm fascinated by people and and certainly i what i hope with table for two is the people we invite that and say yes want to connect that way we invite people sometimes they say no they're just like it's not my jam i don't know bruce Posse, or you know but when they say yes and I never take it personally. That's like the big thing. Like, you know, don't take it personally. I always leave the table so happy. I mean, Sienna Miller, all right, she was t- t- season one. I We fell in love literally at the table. She just had a baby. She's like, oh. I think this is your from our lunch. And I'm like, I don't know about that. <laughs> but um, season two is great. We have Barkin. We have Jeff Goldblum. Yep. We have Colin Jost. We have Michael Mann, who's – this amazing director, Ferrari, Miami Vice, Matt Bomer, I mean, the most beautiful, talented man in Hollywood, Divine Joy Randolph, who won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress for The Holdovers, Sam Taylor Johnson, who's out right now with Back to Black, the biopic on Amy uh, Winehouse. And we got Christian Louboutin coming up. I think we have Emma Roberts' book. She's coming up. So we have some cool people. It's just, and I like... You know, I did Doug Brinkley, and, you know, Doug Brinkley is all about the environment. He's yes. one of the smartest people I met, and that was intimidating to me because I'm like, wow, I'm talking to Doug Brinkley. I'm not talking <laughs> to just an actor like like that I know about. Like, I, you know, have to read things and talk and hold my own with this man who's been in the, these, these rooms. <laughs> and it was so fascinating to me. And it's And the most important thing, I think, for me – and I'm rambling here is to be able to say, I don't know. If someone brings something up, be like, no, I don't know that. Like, explain that to me. Not like I, I don't have to be the expert. I just have to be interested and curious and honest. And and I think that's what makes the show special on both sides. Well, I'll tell you what, Bruce, after after listening to the first season and making it a part of my drive, I mean, it makes me want to go out and it did make me go out and have dinner with more and more people because before it was just my wife and I. But no, it's got to be a group. We got we got to get to, you know, gather and, and have these conversations. And I can't thank you enough for that, that inspiration to be with other people. Thank you. I mean, honestly, that means so much today uh, to me. And today you've made my day like that really. That goes deep, and that's really what this show's about. So that means I'm, I'm doing my job, and I really appreciate that. Please come back to this show anytime, dude. The door is always going to be open for you. Awesome. I appreciate that. I will take you up on that. Thank you. Be brilliant today, okay? Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. You too. Have a wonderful and have a great, safe uh, Memorial Day weekend as we enter into it.